Great to see everybody stopping in. Wish I had some refreshments for you. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the first day of March. Now we're going to do what we always do. We're going to be honing in on some hot OTC and penny stocks. We love to trade them. We love the opportunities made available to us by trading these penny stocks, which are on every single market. They're everywhere. A penny stock is nothing more than a stock under five bucks. You can find those on every single market. So our due diligence is broad. We are looking at a lot of stocks in a lot of different areas. But this site here does make things easier. This is the otcmarkets.com website. I love this site. I do most of my research and due diligence here. I mean, not just for OTC stocks, for all the stocks. Now, I'm not saying it's 100% perfect, but more often than not, I do find what I'm looking for. All that news right there, I get every single piece of it right here at the otcmarkets.com website. That link right there will give you updated news throughout the day as it's coming out. Now, there's a lot of real good news in there, especially for today. There was a lot of news out today. I don't even know if I got all that I wanted to get. But you've got about eight days worth there. You've got the oldest up at the top, newest down at the bottom. And there's a lot of new stuff down at the bottom. So how did we finish our day today? Well, I get the feeling it was a real bad day. I mean, worse than most, and we're gonna find out right now because it really seems slow to me today. That is definitely slow. Oh, look at our trades. Oh no, under 200,000. God, please be different. Oh my God, we barely broke 200,000. Oh, all the numbers are sad, folks. $1.3 billion, 4.6 billion shares, and 201,000 trades. They're all low numbers. I mean, they are way, way down. And things have just been dropping. All February they've been dropping, and here we are at the beginning of March, and things are still dropping. I get the feeling people just don't have a whole lot of money to invest. I mean, inflation is kicking our butt right now, and the stocks are falling. I mean, gee whiz, how much more can they come down? Maybe now is not the time to be trading unless you're doing your due diligence and finding some warm charts and then finding some lingering news to back it up. That's what we're doing now, and I got a few to share with you. Go on. This first stock we're taking a look at, it's a little out of the usual for me. It's a mining company. They mine silver, gold, lead, zinc out of Central and South America. Well, I normally don't talk about mining companies for two good reasons. One, their lingo. I don't understand what they're saying. I don't understand what I'm reading when I look at the news presses. That's the honest truth. The second reason, most of them aren't making any money. There are no revenues. They're still in exploration. Well, not this one. This company isn't just making revenues, they're starting to explode. Now, they don't have any filings, but boy, have they got some hot news presses. Three of them since the beginning of the year. I think that's what got the stock moving, and I think it's going to keep moving. So, BC, EKF, Bear Creek Mining. She finished the day at 50 and a half cents with just a little over a half a percent gain. She's on the top tier of the OTC, the best tier. This is the QX. You have to audit your financials to be here and give us all the information you got about the company. This is the most transparent tier on the OTC. It's the most trustworthy. They give us enough information. They could easily be on the major exchange. Now, you can see down here, they got a lot of green ticks. They got everything we could be looking for. Verified profile and a transfer agent. I'm always talking to you about these. These two ticks, they represent a lot of important information that's being validated behind the scenes by the OTC market. That is part of their job. I, know, I don't know exactly what all the information is, but I know it's important. So if you're going to be in a stock for a long hold, you want as much validated information as you can get. If you're just trading day trades or short swings, don't worry about it. Nothing there to worry about. They do have independent directors. You need those to uplist. I'm sure they use them to get to the QX. And if they got aspirations to go even higher, they're going to need them then too. And they are penny stock exempt. This is a great thing, folks. This means they're not a startup company. They're not risky like that. The literal definition of penny stock exempt means that they've been in business for at least three to five years and they have had millions of dollars in assets during that time and they've kept up with their financial filings. Like I said, they've got all the green ticks we could ask for. Everything looks good here. So what was the relative volume around the company today with their hot, hot, hot news? Well, let's see if it's as hot as they think. 
<laughs> okay, I'm caught off guard. You think I go through all these pages before I talk to you, right? Well, I think it's important that you get some real reactions, and I'm a little surprised here. All right, they're normally only doing 71,000 shares a day, and today they're doing less than half of that. 34,000 shares. We're going to say it's under the radar because this is hot news. Share structure for the company. Okay, they do give us some information here. Outstanding shares is 154 million. Float, they say, is 103 million, at least back in October of last year. Of course, I did a search on Google. Let's see what we got over here. I'm looking for numbers that agree. That's the best I can do. We got 91 million, 146. Is that it? Oh, no. 154. Come on. <laughs> That's it. I got three different numbers here, folks. Not even two of them agree. 154, 146, and 91. Uh, investor's choice. You choose whichever one you want. So it's under 154 million. All of those numbers were under 154 million. That's about the best we can do. Financials for the company. All right, this is where we start to talk. Now you're looking there going, there's nothing there. No, not on the annuals. The money just started coming in and it's picking up momentum. Here is the second quarter for 2022 and the third quarter for 2022. We are now waiting. Everybody's bringing out their financials right now. So any day we're going to get the financials here and look how they're jumping. Remember, we've got to add three zeros behind any of the numbers down here. So that's not 10,000. That's $10 million. The first time they make any revenues come on the board. Boom, $10 million. The next quarter, they more than doubled it. They're at $26.5 million. That is incredible. And when you see the news, you're going to understand why. Let's look at their balance sheet. A little more insight never hurts. Looking at their total assets here, they have $279 million. Remembering those three zeros behind any of these numbers too. Total liabilities, not bad, $155 million. So they've got over $100 million in assets and the money is starting to pour in. Disclosures for the company, absolutely nothing. So let's go to where the story really begins. And the best part of this story is, I don't even have to open the book to read it to you. Honestly, the headlines are clear enough. They give us enough information. So I am saved from entertaining you by reading that tactical jargon. Whew, thank God for that. So we got three pieces of news here. One came out in January, two in February. And the one that came out in January is excessively hot. Bear Creek exceeds guidance with 13,710 ounces of gold produced just in the fourth quarter of 2022. Folks, that is a huge quarter. And you know what? We haven't seen those financials. Those are the next ones to come out any day. This is our catalyst. This is what we're looking for to kick the chart. Plus, they also found another vein of gold in another one of their mines. So things are just getting better and better. The next piece of news that came out in February, their drilling results in a few of their mines demonstrate near-term upside potential. Not as hot as the first piece of news, but it is good news nonetheless. And the last piece of news came out on February 24th. Bear Creek's Mercedes mine to produce 65,000 to 75,000 ounces of gold in 2023, representing nearly 50% increase over 2022. Folks, does it sound like anything is slowing down? They're finding more gold. They're making projections of doing at least 50% more than what they did last year. We saw the revenues double from 10 million to 26 million from quarter to quarter. I'm thinking these next financials are going to be hot and they're going to kick this chart right in the, well, you know, <laughs> let's go take a look at that chart. We're going to be doing all of our charting as usual on my free trading platform. Well, actually, it's my only trading platform. This is Think or Swim. I got it free when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. So can you.
So we are looking at Bear Creek Mining Corporation, ticker BCEKF. This is a six month, four hour chart. She has been falling for quite a while, deep under her 200 day SMA, hit a low bubble here of 27 cents in November. And look at that volume spike. That is incredible. And it's on the right side of the bubble. It's on the green side when the recovery began. She was in a downtrend until she hit that low bubble and she ain't in no downtrend anymore. She is in an uptrend. Going over 50 or 200 and hitting a high bubble here of 80 cents. She did that mid-December. Came down but went back to climbing and she didn't start falling until the beginning of January and at the end of the January she had gone through her 50 day fell hard and firm on the 200 day SMA. Doesn't look like she wants to come down any further. Now let's put this into perspective. We're going to use a regression channel. This is a real simple tool to use. You don't have to be precise about anything. Just poke the right day. I'm going to go up here and poke the low day right there. I'm going to poke it. Then I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to set it up. Look at that. Isn't that great? I didn't even have to look at it. It's done automatically, folks. All you have to do is drag it and it'll put it in the right place for you. Next thing I do is just extend it to the right because I don't know how long I'm going to need it. So what have we got here? We have got a channel which shows us the current like a river, right? The price likes to move into this area to the top, back down to the bottom, bouncing off of the sides like a bowling alley, right? So she started down here at 27 cents, hit that 80 cents, came back down, glued herself to the top of the channel, and then came down hard all the way down here. And right now she is sitting on that 200 day SMA right up underneath that channel on top of her nine. Folks, this is going to go into the channel so easily, and I expect it to hit the top of the channel when it gets inside, and it is at that point right now. Now, of course, we didn't have a whole lot of volume today, but our technicals do show some warmth. They're not hot, but they do show some warmth. Our PPO, our percentage price oscillator, works with a percentage of the price, where the MACD works with the whole price. You read these the same. We need that blue line up over to pink. We need a reversal, and it'll be a power move that can get up there. And it looks like it's working at it right now. MACD's been climbing for about two weeks, just about ready to approach the signal line. But our RSI is very docile because everything has been going sideways. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Let's squeeze this up a little bit. There's the top of our channel, the bottom. She was here in the middle, right up underneath the 50, following that 50 down here to the bottom channel. Now she's gotten on top of the 50. She is on top of it right there, right up underneath the channel. Folks, all this needs is a sneeze and it's going to go back into that channel and then it's most likely going to push itself up to the top of the channel five day, five minute view. All right. Something I want you to realize, folks, this channel we're looking at, that is a 25 cent channel, roughly. We are at 50 cents down here. All this has to do is come back into the channel and it is most likely going to push itself right back up to there. And that's a 50% gain for you right there. That's without any catalyst. That's just working with the current of the channel. This financial comes out with some huge number like 56 million or something. I don't know. If it blows our minds, this stock is going to far surpass the top of this channel and we could get a strong runner. We could make some good money on this one. BCEKF. All we're waiting for is that financial. Keep up with that, folks. This next stock we're taking a look at comes from the major exchange. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is Actelis Networks, ticker ASNS. Now, I found this by going through the charts. Couldn't miss her chart. It is beautiful. It is perfectly set up for a breakout. So when I came over here, I was really hoping to find some lingering news. She has a lot of current filings, but none of them had a catalyst in it. Then I went and looked at the news. Boom! There we go. Jackpot. We don't just have news. We have news that's coming out constantly. And I think this stock is going to be a moneymaker for us. ASNS finished today at 51 cents with six and a quarter percent gains. So what does this company do? Well, their description isn't very clear. They set up networks for the Internet of Things and other stuff. They do it for very big organizations and they do it very quickly. They tell us here that Actelis Networks is a market leader in cyber hardened 
rapid deployment networking solutions for wide area Internet of Things applications, including federal, state, and local governments, ITS, military, utility companies, railroads, telecoms, and campus applications. And then they just go into more detail about the stuff that they use. So this is what they do. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, without any news today, oh, not under the radar, is she? She jumped from 48,000 to 329,000. Now, yeah, we're under a million. It's not a huge number, but that is a huge jump. Share structure for ASNS. They don't give it to us, but we know it's going to be close to a low float. Outstanding shares is only 17 million. Looking at what Google tells us, did a search, got a couple numbers over here. We got one at 13 million, 10 million, 10 million, and I do believe that's all I found. Oh, another 10 million. So we got three at 10 million. So we're going to presume our float is 10 million. Not a bad float if that be what it is. But even if it's only under 17 million, that is still a terrific float. Financials for the company. Annually. Okay, the last money we got annually is in 2021. They did $8.5 million. Don't forget those three zeros. Looking at the quarterly to get some insight for 2022. We got 1.8 million, 3 million, and 1.3 million. So they're making money regularly, though it has dropped this last quarter. Let's take a look at their balance sheet. See what they're looking like. Total assets for the company, 16.3 million. Total liabilities, 10.7 million. So they got roughly $6 million in assets above their liabilities. Not bad. Looking at their disclosures, I don't think we got anything to look at here. Oh, right. They did have lots of current, well, what I call current, December. That's where you're looking for your lingering news. You know, a couple months ago, that's when they're going to say something about something that's going to happen in the future. So I went through all of these, didn't see anything there. But what I did find was in the news. We've got lots of good news here, though they don't have a lot of news to give us. This starts in December. I found three pieces of news here, and we're going to look at each one of them. The first one did come out December 19th. Actelis Networks today reported that an on-base U.S. military implementation utilizing Actelis technology is entering the final phase of deployment to provide networking for various divisions of the United States military. Mm -hmm. By the end of December 2022, so it's already happened, Actelis intends to deliver the final remaining networking technology needed to complete the project, which will total more than a half a million dollars. This project demonstrates our capability to deliver immediate high-speed connectivity utilizing existing copper or fiber over long distances, delivering the reliable networking required by the United States military. And they've got a lot of good information you may want to catch up on in here, but you can see they're working with the military. Big areas. Next piece of news came out January 3rd. The company today announced that it has been selected by Northern Ireland Railways to enable high-speed connectivity for a large-scale safety-critical project. Actelis continues to enable new applications for both passenger and freight railway systems around the globe. Next to Northern Ireland's railways, Actelis solutions are utilized by smart railways in Canada, Italy, Japan, Switzerland, and the United States. So they are out there. They are around internationally. And that last piece of news. This one came out on February 21st. Oregon's second largest city deploys a TELUS hybrid fiber copper networking solutions to enable IoT connectivity for better traffic management. I found this one interesting. The company today announced that the city of Eugene, Oregon has selected a Telex hybrid fiber copper networking solutions as part of its most recent traffic modernization project. Eugene is the second largest city in the state of Oregon and home to the University of Oregon. 
Eugene is adding the company's hybrid fiber copper Ethernet access devices integrated with new traffic controllers to manage traffic flow through several different Internet of Thing devices, including cameras and radar detection sensors. The company's multifunctional solutions enable and extend connectivity to all of these devices while securely supplying the city's operations center with live data. Actelis provides its solutions in over 300 cities around the globe, including Washington, D.C., Seattle, San Jose, Vancouver, that's in Canada. So you can see they're doing a lot in a lot of cities, a lot of countries, and a lot of different ways. It's not just connecting the internet. Here they're working with traffic flow. Who knows what else they can do so I'm expecting this company to start growing I'm expecting this business to get bigger and bigger especially since they do it so quickly and are working with huge organizations let's go take a look at that chart uh-uh don't let first impressions trick you this is ticker ASNS we are looking at a one day one year chart I brought you here for one reason. I wanted to show you that this low bubble here of 37 cents is a 52 week low. Her one year high, that is $3.94. Jumping down to that six month, four hour view. Now her high is $2.08 about five and a half months ago and our low is still the same. But you can see she is getting ready for a breakout. She's been working on it for a while. Back here, she is underneath all of her SMAs. She crossed her 50-day SMA, went straight to the 200, glued herself to the 200, jumped up on top of it a little early. She slipped and fell, came all the way down here to her 52-week low, and in a big hurry has bounced off of that and crossed every single SMA, including the 200. Has pulled back, but it is looking strong. We got lots of volume coming in right now, folks. You can see it is growing. Speaking of growing, our technicals look sound. We got a change of direction on our PPO. She is charging to get over this pink line. That is going to give us some extra oomph. Our MACD is already at a crossover. Look at all those green bars getting bigger and accumulating. And oh my God, look at our RSI. The basement is 30. It was down here at 21 and it has now pushed itself up to 54. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So there's our huge drop, 74 cents down to our 52 week low bubble. And look at this. She is determined to get off the floor. These are huge price bars. Look at how tiny these are. There's not even a middle size bar. It just went from itty bitty dinky to huge, jumping right through the 50, through the 200, and is pulled back and is sitting on top of its nine day SMA. That is a perfect landing. You can't climb unless you're on top of the nine. So this is perfect, right up underneath the 200. Like I said it's set up for a breakout our technicals on the one hour chart they're cooling off I mean she's been going sideways with a little bit of dip and that's what it looks like going sideways with just a little bit of dip looking at our five day five minute chart oh boy she's into it we had a nice bounce here from 38 cents up to 50 cents how about that Went through the 200, came back, landed on her 50, negotiated with it, and then decided what she was going to do. Came through the 50 and bulleted right through that 200-day SMA, hitting 60 cents, falling back down, but not coming down to the 200, stopping at the 50. You can see that. One, two, three, four, and the price is now starting to climb like she's ready to go. A little bit of news, and this thing is going to pop. She is right on the edge right now, folks. This company has a lot of news constantly coming out. They're making deals all the time. So I expect ASNS is not going to be down here for very long. Well, this is kind of disappointing, folks. I actually did cover three stocks. I did them in their entirety and then realized at the very end that I had made a mistake. I had reported some information that wasn't accurate in the very last stock and I didn't want that to get through. So I'm left with two. I don't have enough time to do another one. The other thing I want to let you know is I've got a live streaming event tomorrow. Every Thursday at four o'clock when you hear that market bell go off, <laughs> Me and Lily go live. We're online for about an hour talking to our viewers about stocks they're interested in. So if you got a stock you want us to take a look at, stop on in. We'll gladly give you our opinion on it, whatever that's worth to you.
Remember, folks, always do your own DD. I do make mistakes. Back up my DD with your own. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.